Hi, this is Bill Dannenmeyer of Black Box Partners, and today I want to show you a few slides on technical writing and how to choose the right words in your contracts. This is an important topic for project managers, especially project managers who are working with vendors and with prime contractors or clients in a contractual relationship. So I'll show you these slides now. In our Writing Statements of Work class, we teach technical writing to a certain extent along with project management and some contract language. One of the key things for a person reviewing a contract to understand is the difference between will and shall. Will and shall are used oftentimes interchangeably by people speaking English, but in common parlance they do not understand the key differences that exist between those two words. Will is used to express desire, choice, willingness, consent, and is used to express frequent, customary, or habitual action. Shall is used to express a command or exhortation, what is mandatory, what is inevitable. There's a big difference between this. Will is loose. Shall is structured and strict. So, in writing a contract, since the buyer is the one paying, the buyer ought to be the writer of the contract, and the buyer will say about themselves, the buyer will. The vendor or the seller set will be prescribed and restricted by the contract that the buyer writes. And the buyer writes the language for the seller that says, the vendor shall. This is also reflected in popular culture, the Shirelles famous song, Will You Still Love Me Tomorrow? does not express command, exhortation, or anything that's mandatory. It's completely a question of desire, willingness, something that is unknown. Meanwhile, MacArthur said, I shall return. When he said that, he was saying it was inevitable that he would be back. It was not something that he had a choice in. Nothing he could do would prevent him from being back. Weasel words are words that sneak into your contract and change the intent. These are words like can, might, should, may, to be, ought, reasonably, approximately, normally, etc., as needed. These words are like weasels, the thin words that slip into your contract and wind up ruining the intent. None of these words have very strong meanings like will and shall. Will and shall are words that are very specific. It may seem boring to write statements of work and contracts that only use will and shall, but it is a much better thing than to have weasel words that have snuck into your contract changing the intent or words that could be reinterpreted without clarity. An example of weasel word, and by the way this is from an actual statement of work that was used on contract by one of the participants in one of Black Box's many writing statements of work classes. This is an example from the contract. All fastening hardware to be double nutted with bottom nut being a lock nut to provide for vibration proof installation. This to be is stating it in such a fashion that it's not clear who is actually going to do the work. It's to be done, but when is it to be done? By whom is it to be done? Clarifying the language would look like saying, the vendor shall double nut all fascinating, fastening hardware. The bottom nut on a double nutted item of hardware must be a lock nut to create a vibration proof installation. Another piece of contract language from one of our classes, the reporting module will include a set of standard reports and an advanced query system to generate ad hoc queries which can be stored and modified. These queries will be made available to users by permission. Notice that word can, especially with those two words will, makes this very uncertain. That something can be stored and modified, well theoretically you could store it as a screenshot and theoretically you could modify it with a paint program. That's not what they're probably asking for, but it's not clear enough to demand a action on the part of the vendor. Instead, we should say something like, the vendor shall include standard reports in the reporting module as specified in, and then specify where the reports are. 
The vendor shall ensure that an ad hoc query function is available to users. Ad hoc queries shall be capable of being stored and modified by users. The vendor shall make reporting capabilities available based on user permissions. These bullets show a language that's much clearer, much more specific, and much more shall. More examples. Install PVC coating 2-inch expansion fittings where required. Where required is something big enough that it could be interpreted a, a number of different ways. We could make it a lot more specific by simply saying where we want it required. The vendor shall install PVC coating 2-inch expansion fittings in the following locations, and then you list out the locations where you want the expansion fittings. Here's another example. Seller will assist buyer in the refinement of its initial program management office processes and procedures, def definition of additional processes where required. So we're just assisting, which has no concrete element to it, and it's where required, so it has no end to it also. Instead, we should write it as the seller shall review and rewrite the program management office processes and procedures. The seller shall propose additional processes to the buyer. The seller shall make approved changes and additions to processes following buyer approval of changes and additions. These have been a few slides from the writing statements of work. Thank you for your attention.